I, I might have said in the sermon last week, and, and I, if I did say it because I, I thought that was the case, that, that last Sunday was, was going to be the last in, in the series of, of the, the sermons and messages that I've been giving about having words with Jesus. But yesterday I, I found out that God had other plans. And uh, so this message is entitled, because we, we've had, everything's been sort of, uh, the, the last word's been rhyming. Uh, this message is entitled, Faith is Squashed. All right, I told him in Sunday school today, because our Sunday school lesson had a lot to do with faith, that, that um, this message is going to be probably a little different than, than what you've heard before. Um, I, I'm going to be honest with you, when, when God led me to this, uh, last night, and Martha can tell you, we, we worked yesterday for, for several hours uh, outside, and, and I'd been working on sermons for the revival service next week and all the business busyness of this week. I, I got to uh, Friday night and realized I didn't have a thing ready for church today. I, I had no idea what songs we were going to sing. I had no idea what passage of scripture I was going to use, what message was going to be preached. And yesterday morning, we got up and we worked uh, for about four hours, I'd say or so, wasn't it, William? Three or four hours, and and uh, then I had to go to Winchester because Marla had the, the uh, cataract surgery and her doctor uh, neglected to give her the eye shield that she needed to cover her eye. So night before last, Marla had to sleep sitting up in the recliner with sunglasses on. I'm sure she got a lot of sleep that way. So we, we had the, uh, actually my, uh, my son-in-law's mom and dad who lived just on the other side of Winchester had an extra shield. So we went over to their house and ran and got the shield. So we got back yesterday evening and um, yesterday afternoon, and, and I started praying about working on this sermon. And, and God led me to a passage of Scripture. And one verse we're really familiar with. And I thought, okay, this is the verse that the Lord wants me to talk about. And, and God said, no, I want you to talk about what comes after that. So here's the passage of Scripture. It's Luke chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. And again, the apostles, Jesus had been talking, and this is almost even a continuation of the passages of Scripture that we've been preaching on. I think we started with Luke 14, uh, the last uh, now five Sundays. But it says in, in Luke chapter 17, verses 5 through 10, that the apostles said unto the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. And the Lord answered, if you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, may you be uprooted and thrown into the sea, and it would obey you. When a servant comes in from plowing or taking care of sheep, does his master say, come in and eat with me? No. He says, prepare a meal, put on your apron, and serve me while I eat, then you can eat later. And does the master thank the servant for doing what he was told to do? Of course not. In the same way, when you obey me, you should say, we are unworthy, unworthy servants who have simply done our duty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, so like I said, there's one of those verses in that passage of Scripture that's probably familiar to you. Which verse is it? Come on. There you go, verse 6, right? If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to the mulberry tree, and other translations have it. I think one's a sycamore tree and whatever. But, but you could say to the tree, may you be uprooted and thrown into the sea. Been nice to have done that yesterday, right, William? So I haven't used that chainsaw on it and loaded it into the truck. <laughs> um, and, it, and it would be done, right? It, it, would, it would obey you. Um, but what if we took this passage as a whole, you know, because we, we know Jesus makes that statement about having faith uh, as small as a mustard seed. And he talks about the results of that faith. If we have that much faith, we can tell the tree what to do and the tree would do it. Um, but the disciples said this in verse five, show us how to increase our faith. Now, does Jesus answer the, their question? Does, does Jesus honor their request? Does Jesus tell them how to have more faith? What do you think? I read it to you. See, I don't think he does. 
Um, he tells them what a small amount of faith could do. And then he launches into a parable, right? And in that parable about the servant who, who's working with the master and plowing the field and taking care of the sheep and, and, and how the master doesn't say, hey, come in here with me and sit down and have a meal with me. Instead, the master says, you, get, you put your apron on and you, you get my stuff ready and you feed me. And then when that's done, um, then you can sit down and eat, but don't expect a thank you. Now, I'm going to be honest. When I read this, one of the first things I did was I put myself in the shoes of that servant. I mean, how, how would it be if, you know, I, I thought, well, now, what, what if I was that servant? I've worked all day in the field and, and, and with my boss, and at the end of the day, and instead of being grateful for what I've done, instead of being told thank you, or instead of being told uh, uh, I've done a great job, Instead, I'm told, now you come in and, and after working out in the field all day and you put your apron on and you get my supper ready. Is that what he says? Right? And, and then after I'm done eating, uh, you sit down and eat. And then, then get up and do the dishes. <laughs> right? Okay? I wouldn't feel very appreciated about that, would you? I'm not sure that I'd want to remain in that kind of job uh, to work for that kind of fella. And then Jesus doesn't stop there, does he? He goes on with, with verse 9 and says, does the master thank the servant for doing what he was told to do? Of course not. Huh? Jesus says, of course the master shouldn't thank his servant. What? This is the, the Jesus, you know, that, that, that tells us to be compassionate, to be grateful, and to be loving. And, and he says, no, of course not. <clears throat> then he goes, and this is the real kick in the teeth to me, to verse 10. Now he's talking to the disciples who'd ask a question about how to get more faith. Show us how to increase our faith. And then Jesus says in verse 10, in the same way, when you obey me, you should say, we're unworthy servants who have simply done our duty. So he's saying, don't expect any thanks from me either. Have you, have you read this before? <laughs> like I said, we, we know verse 6, right? We like to stand on verse 6. Oh, if I had that kind of faith. Oh, I can say to that tree, you know, pick yourself up. I, I can move mountains. I can, you know, it's, I mean, it's not the only place Jesus says this in Scripture. And that's the verse we focus on is that, oh, increase our faith, because that's what the disciples wanted to know. How can we increase our faith? So, I, maybe that's why we don't hear too many sermons on this passage of Scripture. Because Jesus is saying, basically, and I'm going to paraphrase it here, shut up, do your job, and remember how unworthy you are to be my servant. Right? I told you in Sunday school, this is going to be different. <laughs> but that's what he says. Don't expect any thanks. Put me first. Do your job. And deal with it. So what's really going on? Well, maybe, just maybe, Jesus knows the reason for the disciples asking for more faith. Because again, that's what they ask, right? Show us how we can increase our faith. They didn't say why they wanted more faith. Well, again, we, you know, we have to look at, at what we've been looking through in Luke for, the, for a few weeks now. We've got to go all the way back to that first message in, in, in chapter 14 when we looked at counting the cost of following Jesus, right? Remember that? Nobody goes out and starts to build a building without first counting the cost to see if he's got enough money to complete it. 
And then there was that whole pick up your cross and follow me thing, you know, that Jesus talks about. And then those other parables and those other teachings that went on not only between Jesus and the disciples, Jesus and the people, but even especially Jesus and the Pharisees that we've been looking at. And, and, um, and so just maybe after hearing all this, the disciples are thinking, man, this following Jesus stuff is getting hard. You know, becoming a Christian is easy, folks. Remaining a Christian is another story. Jesus put it out there in, in, in chapter 14. If anyone wants to come after me, they got to pick up their cross each and every day and follow me. Crosses are not vacation time. Crosses are not fun times. Crosses are crosses. Crosses are torture devices. Crosses are instruments of death. And yet Jesus says, you got to pick it up every day and follow me. So just maybe the disciples are thinking, this is getting a little bit harder. Matter of fact, this is getting a little bit out of hand. So we might need some more faith. So let's, let's ask Jesus to give us some more faith. Now, why would we want more faith? Anybody answer that? Why would we want more faith? Would we want more faith so that we could do things like, you know, make trees uproot and throw themselves up there in Wolf Lake? That's probably not it, right? Why do we want more faith? Now, the nice religious answer is, we want more faith so that we can follow Jesus more closely, right? And have a better relationship with him. But let me give you the reason why we really want more faith. We want more faith in order to make things easier on us. Okay? Say it again. We want more faith in order to make things easier on us. Think about it. I mean, doesn't having more faith make it easier to get through things that we go through in our lives? No. All of a sudden, you know, the car breaks down or the bills become due and we don't have the money or, or we get sick or a loved one gets sick. If I just had more faith, it'd be a lot easier to get through this. Right? Now, so Jesus' first answer about having faith as small as a, as a grain of mustard seed and uprooting trees really seems like a good answer. Um, and again, Jesus has been telling us these past five weeks now, you know, count the cost, pick up our cross. Uh, um, Jesus says go out and, and win the lost and, and our debts are tossed and we're just being forgiving, not just being forgiving, but, you know, that would have been the easy part. We all like to be forgiven, right? But he doesn't just talk about being forgiven. He talks about forgiving other people in the way that we've been forgiven. And, and then Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross so that we can find our way to God the Father. And, and, and the disciples, again, go, this stuff's getting hard. Jesus, increase our faith. Jesus, make things easier for us. You've told us to pick up our cross and follow you, Lord, but we're not you. And, and, and so we need things to be a little bit easier on us. And Jesus says, All that. Work for me. Prepare my meal. Then you can eat later. Don't expect thanks. And when you obey me, Jesus said, you should just say we're unworthy servants simply doing our duty. So what's the lesson? The lesson is this. Faith is gained through obedience and hard work. You ever think about that before? Faith is gained through obedience and hard work. Now what do I mean? Jesus tells us that we must be doing our duty to him, he's the master, first, before we can start doing great things on our own. We have to serve him. We have to be obedient to him. I've, you know, I've told you over and over again since I've been here that that phrase when I talk about belief in Christ, that belief's not enough, that belief requires obedience. Jesus tells us over and over again, we can't serve two masters. We're going to love one and hate the other. 
Well, who's the master we need to love? It's Jesus. He's the master. Yes, he's friend. Yes, he's savior. But he's also master. He's king of kings and lord of lords. And the last time I checked, king of kings and lord of lords means he's number one. He's in charge and we're his servants. We don't like to hear that sometimes. So more faith comes when we experience God being with us through the mistakes that we make, the sins that we commit, the trials that we go through, the temptations that we have, basically the experience of being a Christian. When we do that, we gain more faith. Jesus has told them how to increase their faith. We just don't get it a lot of times because we don't want to hear it because it's not easy. It's all picking up our cross again. But this little parable teaches us that we shouldn't expect to accomplish great things by a strong faith that's just simply given to us at a particular moment of time. Jesus didn't go, have some faith. Here's more. There's more. Good vibes. Think your way. I hate that phrase, by the way. I just, every time I hear somebody on, or see somebody on Facebook say, sending good vibes, I just want to go, you know. <laughs> Jesus doesn't do that. Here, here's you some faith, and here's you all some faith. No, he doesn't do that. Forget it. Don't do me them good vibes things. I don't want to hear it. Just ask me to pray for you. That's a lot better anyway. All right? Faith isn't just something that's simply given to us in a moment of time. If it was, you think we'd really appreciate it? Or we'd really keep it? What about the next time a hard time comes or the next time? Because, I mean, let's face it, we don't just go through one hard time and it's over, right? (laughs) You said there are going to be trials and tribulations, plural. There will be sorrows. And you will sin. So it's just given to us, just here, here you go, moment of time, there's your good faith, your good vibes faith. What about the next time it happens? And the next time it happens, and the next time it happens. So what he's saying is we have to work diligently. We have to work patiently. We have to work bravely, following Jesus in everything that we do. And doing it, the Bible says, not for me, but for the glory of God. That's putting the master first. So in other words, Afterward, Jesus says, and the parable says this, then we get to eat and drink. So when we honor Christ, when we serve him, then we get to eat and drink. Well, what's he talking about there? Then we get more faith. That's what eating and drinking means right there. Then we get more faith. We get what we ask for. Jesus said he'll give us what we ask for. We ask in according to God's will. And I believe it's, it's God's will that we ask for more faith. He doesn't say it comes free. He doesn't say it comes like that. we got to work for it. We have to serve him. Because after all, aren't we really unworthy servants of God? That's grace. Right? We're unworthy. We, we don't deserve this. We don't deserve our salvation. We don't deserve the blessings we get every day. We're unworthy servants of God. And when we come to church, and when we give our tithes, and when we go out and witness, when we give of ourselves, Jesus said, we're just simply doing our duty, serving him. Folks, if you, like those disciples, have asked God for more faith, and it seems like that was squashed, that your faith was squashed, don't give up. Keep being obedient. Keep serving the Lord. Keep doing it for the glory of God. Thank you. And it'll come. It'll come just when you need it most. Let's pray. Father, so many times... We want things simply. We want them from you. And we want them now. 
And we'd love to do it without any trials and tribulations. We'd love to do it without having to pick up our cross. We'd love to have it as a snap of the finger. But you've told us there will be trials, there will be tribulations. There will be sorrows. There's going to be hard times. But you carry your cross and you keep being obedient and you keep being my servant. And I'll eat, but I'll not let you go hungry. You'll not be without. You'll eat too. Father, increase our faith. But help us to do our part, to remain faithful. In Christ's name, amen.